All right, welcome to our video for Thinking Like a Scientist, Chapter 1, Section 3. Uh, the origins of chemistry actually can be found way back in history in something called alchemy, where they studied matter before the development of chemistry, and they developed a lot of the tools and techniques for working with chemicals. An interesting fact about alchemy, or at the very least an interesting belief about alchemy, was that what they were really trying to do was find ways to turn non-precious metals into precious metals. The most common example being that they were trying to find a way to turn lead into gold. Eventually, though, scientists developed an experimental approach. And there's a story in your textbook about Anton Lavoisier, and the, the particular story is not that important to us, but if you really want to know more about it, you can find it on page 21 of your textbook. But he was a scientist back in the 1700s, and he transformed chemistry from just simply observation to experimentation. His main contribution was that he demonstrated that oxygen was necessary for combustion, combustion being the burning of materials. So that's an important uh, scientist, scientific word to remember is combustion. Now, I kind of put the word the in parentheses here. Maybe quotes would have been better. Because to say the scientific method is would really be too specific. It's important that your method of experimentation be scientific, but that doesn't mean there's only one method. However, we're going to talk about one today because how much time do you really want to spend on this? So usually it starts with making observations, looking at things in the world around you, and then coming up with some sort of question something that I wonder why something is the way it is. So you come up with a question about it and then kind of making a prediction. Now you probably know this word from years and years of science class. It is a very important one, but that would be a hypothesis and hypotheses is plural. So hypothesis, I've got my P there, hypo, T H E S I S is singular and hypotheses is plural. So a hypothesis is a proposed explanation for an observation. Like I said, it's a prediction. You see something happen, and you kind of come up with a reason why you think it can happen. And then you're going to test that, and you're going to test it with an experiment, which is the procedure you use to test hypothesis. Now, in an experiment, it's very, very important that you, you really control as much of the experiment as you can. Okay? So... There are certain things in the experiment that's going to change, and those things are called variables. Okay, Try to think differently as far as experimentation goes than you might in math class. Right? In math class, what's a variable? X. In science, it's not. In science, a variable is simply something that changes. Okay, Different kinds of variables that are important. One, the independent variable, the factor that the scientist changes, the factor that I change as the scientist is independent. I am the scientist. I am independent. I like to call that the real variable because that's in the experiment. That's the thing that you're changing. I'm changing. The scientist is changing. The dependent variable is really the result. I don't like calling it a variable because it's simply the result that you measure. But very important terms you have to remember. You have to remember independent variable, dependent variable. And then when you're going to be graphing these things, the independent variable goes on the X and the dependent variable goes on the Y axis. Okay, everything else is really important to make sure that they remain constant, right? And constant means staying the same. So like, for example, if you're testing the growth of a certain kind of seed into a plant, right? And you're just trying to see how much water this particular seed needs. If you take one and give it a lot of water, 
and it's out in the sun, and the other one you hardly give any water, but you kept it in the closet. Well, you didn't keep enough things constant, so you're really not sure what causes the results that you get. So it's very important that you're testing one variable and everything else stays constant. Now, in an experiment, there's pretty much always going to be what's called a control. And that's kind of like the normal independent variable. That would be like in the plant situation, the fact that you're watering it. Let's say you wanted to see the effect of salt water on plants and you're going to add a different amount of salt to the water for different seeds that you're growing, the control would be no salt at all. It would just be adding plain water to the plant. And scientific methods lead to the developing of theories and laws. And there'll be more on that later as the course goes on. Now, after doing an experiment, a very important thing is collaboration and communication. That when this is where if somebody does something completely by themselves, tells nobody about it, or doesn't tell about it in enough detail that somebody else can duplicate what they did, means what they did isn't really going to be that valid or accepted. Uh, the term that's used in science is called peer review, where someone's peers, P-E-E-R, not necessarily friends, but their colleagues, even in other locations where research takes place, where you have peer review, where people are trying to duplicate it and also trying to poke holes in it, because if they can't poke holes in it and people can duplicate it, that makes your experiment more valid. All right, that is the end of our video for one point three. This is the last one that we'll be doing together in class. The very next one you'll be doing at home on your own.